Okay, the session is now beginning. And welcome everybody to the Open eWebinar. What we're going to be talking about today is the easy steps to use data replication for your NAS shares. So what we're going to do is some easy steps. So where to download the DSS v6 to test, as many of you should know this, um, but it's always good to refer back to it. Setting up the NAS logical volume uh, for your NAS shares and to use with the data replication. And then we're going to create a snapshot and assign it to the NAS logical volume. Once we do that, then we're going to be able to set the enable the data replication agent to the destination server. Once we complete that, we'll be able to create the data replication task on the source server, and then we'll check to see if the data is on the destination server, either by the shares or into others. So today is the 28th of September 2010. And I'm Todd Maxwell, Open e Technical Sales, with Tom Simon, Open e Sales. Just for your information, all the webinar information is recorded and will be provided at our website. So if you take a look at the OpenE.com, then you go to Libraries. In the Library section, you'll see Webcasts and Demos. The presentation is muted. This will avoid background noise as best as possible. It allows you to listen to the presentation without any interference. Questions are always welcome. So again, on the right side of the bottom corner of the NetViewer window, you'll have the ability, and there's a function there called chat. And there you can chat me messages or ask a question. So what we'll show in the beginning is very simple, is where to download the DSS v6 from our website. And if you have an account, you can always uh, set up an account, get a free trial, and use it for 60 days. Well, you can also download from our free trials the DSS v6 zip version, which you can install on a USB flash stick. There's a README file. It's very easy to install. Or you can use the ISO image to burn the CD-ROM, uh, burn onto the CD-ROM with the ISO image and boot off the CD-ROM. So that's pretty much it for the PowerPoint. So I'd like to go right into the functions of DSS. So I don't like to spend too much time on PowerPoints, but keep up to date as we do have our schedules online on our web page uh, for new themes and, and dates and times. So as we go right into the Open e website, uh, in the beginning we talked about downloading the trial version. Here on the right side, you'll see that we have the free version, DSS Lite, and also the full version, 60-day trial version. You can click on that blue button. Keep in mind that the 60-day trial is a full version, so you will be able to use all the functionality. You have the ability to use it for 60 days. And if you need to reuse it for more time, you can. And this allows you to be able to reuse it again for another 60 days. So here is the uh, ISO image that you can download and burn on the CD. Please release, uh, read the quick start guides and the important notes. And here is the DSS v6 zip version. You can unpack the zip file and begin reading the information on how to expand it and put it on a USB flash stick. So let's begin with the DSS that I have set up here. You'll see that I have really three servers here. One is the DSS, which is 0.220. This is going to be my source server, a DSS destination server, and a DSS backup additional server. I want to let you know that there is a new release coming out this week. Uh, right now I'm working with the release candidate, 4781. And it has a lot of new features and updates, so please be aware of that and pay attention on possibly downloading it for this week. All right, so let's begin. One of the first things I want to do and in, in go into the DSS is go to the volume manager and volume groups. Obviously, I have my volume and my unit set up and ready and available. Once that's complete, you'll see on the left we have a volume group 00. zero. You can always create many volume groups, by the way. Now, I've already created a NAS logical volume that is our about 100 gig. And this is going to be my source server. And I have files on my source server, and we're going to verify that in just a minute. So on when you do data replication, you need 
when you're the source server, you're going to need snapshot. So we're going to need to create a snapshot and assign it to the logical volume LB0000. And the reason is, is that when the data replication works, what's going to happen when we basically start the task? It's going to immediately, the snapshot's going to take a snapshot of the logical volume. And then from there, the data replication is going to synchronize to the destination server. So that way, the reason for the snapshot provides stability. Uh, and it also provides performance. If we were to take this, this straight right from the logical volume, well, let's say something were to happen to the logical volume at that point in time, and you didn't take the snapshot, because the snapshot only takes a few seconds. Additionally, performance. So if you can imagine that we're utilizing the logical volume that you're actually writing to and reading from, but you didn't have a snapshot, this would slow down performance for read writes and your users. So what we're going to do is create a snapshot. We're going to select right next to the action bar right here. And we're going to select new snapshot. Then we're going to select and state to assign the snapshot to LV00. Now, if you just create the snapshot, um, you have the ability to, on the bottom, to be able to change it. Where here in the snapshot definitions, you can go back and set it back to LV000. So let's create a snapshot size. And I get a lot of questions on this. What size should the snapshot be? Well, there's two schools of thought. One is you could be 12 to 15 percent of the total logical volume size. So in this case, 12 gig or 15 gig. Or three times the amount of writes you think are going to be made during those changes. So if you're going to make, let's say, 10 gig worth of changes that day, then maybe a 30 gig snapshot is necessary for you. So for this exercise, we will just go ahead and create a 15 gig snapshot and hit apply. And, and momentarily, you're going to see that a new snapshot volume is created. And it will automatically assign itself to the LB00. So here it states it's a new snapshot. Here's your 15 gig. And you notice we can remove it. But did you notice that we cannot remove the LV00? This reason is due to because there is a task assigned to it. So there's some responsibility. So we don't want you to delete it because you might have some very important purpose for it. And this protects you. In order to delete that NAS logical volume, you would have to remove the snapshot or unassign it. And you can do, simply do that here and just specify unassign. So now that we have our snapshot, uh, we have our NAS logical volume. Let's go to our configuration settings, I mean NAS settings, and let's make sure that we have everything set. And we do. We're using an ADS connection, so that way we can preserve some of the access control list. And let's go to our NAS share. And here's where I am the source where the data will be residing on. We can always view it here. Or I've done Explorer here showing we're going to have some files on the source server, which is the last two octets of the IP address, 0 0.220. So I have all these uh, directories and files that I would like to replicate uh, to my destination server. Once I have this set up, I'm ready at this point to set up my destination server. So let's go to our destination server. We see we have a NAS logical volume. LV00. So this is going to be our destination. Then we're going to go to our NAS settings. What we want to do here is enable the data replication agent. Then we're going to go to the share and let's create a share. We'll call this destination. We'll hit apply. So that way when we replicate our source share called data, we're going to replicate it to the destination server share called data destination. If we look at the destination here, it's empty. So we'll do a refresh. And currently there's no files or directories on the share. Now when you get to the share, we want to make sure that we can enable the data replication agent. So let's go all the way down 
to receive data age replication agent settings. We're going to apply this. And we're going to create a login name. So for this purposes, we'll just keep it simple. Use my name. I'm going to create a password. And you can also specify allow access for certain IP addresses. And this is for more security. So now we'll hit apply. And now we're ready to start the source data replication task. Let's go back to our source server. And now we want to go to maintenance, backup, data replication. And here you'll see the note, data replication is disabled. In order to use it, enable the replication agent on the configuration NAS setting menu. So this is important that I did this so that way you can remember that you want to go back to your source, go to NAS settings, scroll all the way down to where it states enable data replication agent. Now we can go right back to backup, maintenance backup, and go to data replication. And now you see that the, we are now ready to use the data replication. So we'll create a simple task name called data rep. We're going to select a share. Now the share that we have our files on or will be at the data share. And immediately it picks up that the snapshot that we created is assigned to the logical volume 000. Now let's say you didn't assign a snapshot. It will state that there's no snapshot. So this allows you to go right back uh, to create your snapshot and assign it to the NAS logical volume. I also want to make another note that if you are using backups uh, with data replication, that if the backup is currently going on at the same time with the data replication, the backup will take higher priority and your data replication will not start. So we, con we consider that the backup is far as a higher priority than the data replication. So when scheduled concurrently with backup and using snapshots from the same logical volume, the data replication will be stopped. So you will see a snapshot error in the data replication status. field and the three find this information if you click on this question mark here and by the way this works for all functionalities that you have a great depth of information more details about that specific function and if you look down the bottom we put this note containing about if you're using across the internet make sure you configure your firewall to port 873 and of course, some of the information that I'm providing you is right here as well on the uh, online help manual. So now we have our destination server. We want to select our destinations. Now, once we find one, share is found. And it was Todd, so we'll specify Todd, and of course we had the password on the destination. And what I want to do is select by default the log replication errors and use access control list. Now what this means is that when this is turned on, if you want to have your files replicated with their access control list permissions. So for ADS or, or if you're using, using internal LDAP and you have read, write, and execute permissions for certain users and groups, enable this. If you really don't care, you can take that off. Uh, there's no difference. It's just that you want to be able to carry those access control lists over. Uh, and then don't delete files. We left this off, and it's default by off. And with this option, if this option is basically disabled, what that means is all destination files not found on the source will be deleted. So if you want to keep these files, you need to enable this option. So it's kind of matching up the files.